Няколко думи за нашия лектор. Харалан е човек, който обожава да прави технологични решения на нетехнологични проблеми. Той има дългогодишен опит в IT и днес ще удари финалния акорд на OpenFest 2016, като ни разкаже за предимствата на това да допринасяме за Open Source проекти. Вашите аплодисменти за Харалан. Hi everyone, it's great to be here. Um, this talk is about contributing to open source, why it's important to contribute, how that helps us, and how to start contributing. Uh, let's just get started with a bit of history. Um, it's a diff it was a different time back in the late 90s, when the open source term was coined and made popular. Before the term open source, there was the so-called free software. It's important to understand why the effort was made to make the open source term and open source software popular. This was the time of the Halloween documents, leaked internal uh, reports from Microsoft, showing how a big software company having dominance on the market was aiming to diminish open source software and to impede its growth. Then the open source initiative was started by Bruce Perrins and Eric Raymond. They tried to help open source software with its marketing problem. Free software was mistaken as just being without cost, instead of providing freedom. Open source and the initiatives around it helped create the image of open development, distribution, and modification of the software in the minds of the public. Open source is now ubiquitous. Everyone is using it, from big corporations to high school students in developing nations. Even non-open source software is using hundreds of open source libraries. We know open source is not going anywhere. Governments are also embracing open source. The US government has recently released the People's Code, and the Bulgarian parliament has passed a law stating every new government project should be open source. GitHub has released its state of the Octobers in September this year. They said the, organiza the organization with the largest number of open source contributors is Microsoft. If you say that to people from the past, they will laugh at you. I would say the problems op open source was facing before are now mostly solved. Small teams, big corporations, and governments all are embracing it, and this just increases even more with time. The adoption of open source is not a problem. But with more and more new people diving into programming, we have more and more users and relatively fewer and fewer contributors. Many of the people from the generation which grew open source to what it is today are contributing heavily. We need new people to do the same. Also, there are experienced people who have something to contribute, but for one reason or another, they hold back. Open source is taken for granted. Every new developer who starts programming is using it, from the .NET stack to the latest JavaScript package manager. But the question is whether the majority of them will join the open source community. This is a formula which I believe holds true. The number of contributors of a repository is greater than the number of maintainers. And the number of users is significantly greater than the number of contributors. And this will hold true even if more people join open source. But we need to make sure the gap between number of contributors and number of users does not increase materially. We need more contributors. We need to activate more developers, developers from the existing IT community and new people coming in. Even people who are not programmers or not technical at all could help. But why to contribute? Why should people contribute? What will motivate them? Um, contribute because we need more contributors? No, that doesn't, doesn't work. That's not a motivation for people. Um, for, for people taking photos. Um, so we could say that people should contribute because that's giving back to the community. Some people are indeed motivated by that. But I think this comes later when you explore the beauty of the open source community more. And a lot would cons not consider this a driving motive. Many people 
um, think contributing to open source means doing work without payment for the greater good. And this is true in many cases. But that's not the only thing. You're getting a lot in return as well. I want to make the case for the idea that open source contributions could help you. It's often seen as a selfless act, but it also brings you a lot of benefits and self-improvements. Contributing to open source is not a zero-sum game. When you, see, uh, when you use open source, it doesn't lose anything. And when you contribute back, you gain as well. Uh, but who am I and why I'm talking to you about open source? My name is Roland Dobrev. You can call me Harry. I am HK Dobrev everywhere on the web. I'm currently CTO of this small and cool startup, Clippings.com. I'm not very experienced, and I don't have any big popular open source repositories of my own. However, when I see something I don't like, I fix it. I scratch my own niche. I maintain a few packages with open source clippings, and I'm added as a collaborator to a couple of other repositories. But mostly, I'm a contributor, not a maintainer. But I've learned a lot over the, year, over the few, uh, last few years from participating in open source. I learned, lo I learned a lot about best practices. I improved my communication skills significantly. Uh, when I was starting to use a new interesting library at work, I later then ex explored it, found out what I was missing, and started contributing. And vice versa, when I was contributing to an interesting uh, project, and I later I introduced my day-to-day -day work, I already knew a lot about it and what it would or wouldn't do. Uh, so I want to share some practical benefits for you, which I think you would get uh, if you act actively contribute uh, to open source. You will be able to learn from the best. Um, you will be able to learn from people better than you uh, regularly and interact with them, and you could find the best people in some areas uh, that you're interested in and start interacting with them and actually collaborating with them on some project of their own. Uh, you'll improve your communication. You'll learn to express yourself better, defend your opinions with arguments, and accept others. I can't stress this enough. Most people who don't have long experience to open source or remote work cannot express themselves well in writing, and especially when communicating with people they don't know. In, in my opinion, this is a key skill and needs to be sharpened whenever possible. You'll learn about new tools and best practices. Many people are introduced to things like automated tests, continuous integration, call style checkers, and fixers while exploring and contributing to open source projects. You will find out about um, releases and release branches, change logs, public discussions, requests for comments, code reviews. Dealing with backwards and future compatibility is also something which you'll best learn with open source projects. You'll be introduced to new approaches, solving problems. You could acquire a lot of useful skills by reading the discussions, looking at implementations, and suggesting alternatives. You'll improve your own personal image before your peers and employers. You'll get more, more visibility and be able to present some of your good work to the public. Many employers look for open source contributions when considering whether to hire. This may not be always fair, but it's common. However, the skills you'll acquire and the things you'll learn during uh, open source contributions will actually make you a better candidate as well. Not only the number of pull request stars or followers. You'll, significantly, uh, you'll get significantly better at remote work. You'll see how software is being created asynchronously, asynchronously together with hundreds of individuals in different time zones. You'll start communicating your intentions explicitly You'll understand why keeping progress in the open is important and how to do it yourself. You can even help make, uh, make the world a better place. There are numerous open source projects helping with charities, medical research, space exploration, and human rights like privacy and voting. If you're interested in that, you're able to actually contribute and make an impact through open source. But if you are not, uh, not into open source, how to actually contribute, um, how to start, and especially for people um, who are not technical or uh, don't consider themselves a good, a good programmers, here are some tips on how to start. 
the most important is start now. As I said before, scratch your own itch. So start something you use. Whether it's your favorite pitch framework, RubyGem, or JavaScript package, chances are you already use an open source library which you're quite familiar with than most people. There could be a small feature you're missing or a nasty bug that's bothering you. The important is to start now. Communicate with the maintainers, the bug, the feature, the documentation fix, and get involved now. Don't delay. Um, you can start by just reporting an issue, uh, something that's uh, bothering you, uh, something you've experienced. Try to report as, be as best as possible, and work with the uh, maintainers and contributors to actually resolve the issue completely. Um, as you do that, you'll actually be able to explore the project more. Uh, you then can familiarize, familiar, familiar, sorry, uh, you can um, familiarize yourself with the code base and um, start contributing more with ideas, discussions, um, in the pull requests and issues. You can improve the documentation. That's something that's disregarded as something very small, uh, but actually it's quite important. Uh, people don't often have time for the documentation. And you could start there because you're the user and you're reading the documentation. Uh, so that's uh, something that you could start. And as you explore more of the documentation, you can um, explore new features. Also, here is a place where you can uh, help immensely with translating. Uh, even if uh, you don't know much about the project, uh, chances are that you know another language better than the maintainer. So you can help translate uh, the documentation first. You can start studying a test, uh, even if you haven't written a single test before. Um, start with uh, something small that you know and you can uh, wrap your head around, or um, start with a big project that's popular and have the infrastructure and people to support you. Um, there are all, always a need for uh, more tests in uh, software, so that's, that we always welcome. Pick an issue and take action. Um, there are many projects now um, that have the label uh, marking issues as easy pick or good for beginners. Uh, look for these projects and look for these labels and pick something, um, start exploring, ask for, ask for help, and get it done. Um, so what's actually stopping you? Many, many people are are um, making some excuses or giving reasons that uh, why they can't contribute to open source. Here are some of them and uh, why, uh, how you could alleviate these problems. So some things you don't know may, may stop you, like for example, licensing. Uh, licensing is an important part of open source. Uh, it's important to uh, give credit and protect copyright. But you don't need to familiarize yourself with uh, all the licenses and even with the uh, specific project. Just start contributing, and you'll actually figure that, figure that out later uh, with the help of other people in the community. Um, forking, many people actually uh, say that they can uh, create the issue, send some code, but they can't actually create, for example, pull request or merge request. Um, but Start, start first the discussion, uh, discussing the issue. Don't stop yourself because you don't know how to make a pull request. You'll figure it out that later. Uh, and people will help most often than not. English is a big problem. Um, many people uh, say that it's a valid reason to not contribute because uh, they don't have a good English. But the truth is that um, many people don't have good English in open source and they still contribute. You can um, take your time. Uh, there's no need to uh, speak in English. You just need to write. You can use translators. You can ask someone for help. And people will understand. Even if uh, uh, there are some remarks about your English, uh, try to do better next time, and many people will be accepting of your English. Um, the imposter syndrome is quite common. It describes the state of mind when you have an unrealistic low self-esteem and feel fear of being exposed. Many people feel it at work, and it's also common in open source. People stop themselves from contributing because they think they're not worthy and don't have anything meaningful to contribute. 
The IT, in the IT industry, it is especially common as there are always people smarter than you and they are quite visible. However, you need to believe in yourself. There is always something you can contribute, from translations to issues to groundwork. Uh, some people say their company won't allow them to open source anything, even personal projects in their free time. But is this really true? Ask your boss, manager, human resources, or a company lawyer. Chances are you're free to contribute to open source projects. Um, even, if you, even if you don't, even if you can't contribute because of uh, some contract, you can ask for permission for a specific project. Don't find excuses, just act. Also, don't forget to think about whether your employer shares your interest and is best for you. Um, some people don't know how to code, but that's not a stopper either. Um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot to learn from uh, contributing to open source software you use just as, as a user. You can contribute to, uh, with issues and documentation, as I said previously, and you can actually uh, use uh, open source as an internship while you're, while you're actually learning to code uh, from online tools, for example, or somewhere else. Um, it's always good to find a good internship at the, the company, paid or unpaid, but open source could act as a substitute. Uh, pick a project, start contributing regularly, and talk to maintainers that you want to improve, and they'll probably uh, be very accepting. If you don't know Git, uh, I'll encourage you to learn it, but there are more and more tools that help you contribute even without knowing version control. Uh, many people contribute through uh, just web interface and then learn Git uh, later. And with time, you'll actually learn more and more version control systems. And you'll see that they're one of the best tools you could possibly learn. Probably start with Git, but don't, don't let that stop you. Some people say that they don't know where to, where to start. Um, start with, with something that you need, a bug that you know of, a feature that you want, or, um, or just like um, picking issues that are marked as uh, easy pick or something like that. Um, I'll talk a bit about open source at work. A lot of people uh, think that open source is something that they do uh, in their free time and they can't contribute anything to open source while at work. Um, but actually there are some big myths about it. Uh, myth um, number one, only big companies do it, like Facebook, Google, Apple, um, GitHub. They're the ones that actually produce big open source projects, and people have paid to do it during their work hours. But small companies could do that as well. Um, you could uh, like you could open source uh, common code and uh, start using um, better practices by using models across projects. Um, you'll, some, uh, like in the beginning, many people won't contribute back, and this won't be, pro um, won't be like uh, popular projects, but even if they're bad, it will actually uh, improve your code level, uh, improve the, uh, the process of deploying and installing dependencies. Um, it, uh, number two is we don't have the money. Uh, actually, open source could save you money uh, because of people contributing back or uh, because, for example, uh, you could uh, use more and more free tools if uh, some of your software is open source. Uh, you could start with, uh, with your blog or static website and then identify a library you could um, export and extract out of your code base. Um, some say that only product companies can uh, open source and agencies cannot do open source at all. Uh, but actually, it makes a lot of sense to me uh, for agencies to, to do open source. Um, probably don't start your client's, client's code. It's hard to find clients that uh, you could explain that there's no problem for that project to be open source. Uh, but start with common code across projects. Uh, start with uh, dev tools, with your blog, with uh, landing pages, etc. Uh, there's no problem in them being open sourced. Uh, with time, you'll actually uh, develop better software because uh, you'll find more use cases for a particular library. You'll make it more generic, and others will use it. 
but the most important thing about it is talk about it with your peers, with your managers, with your boss. Act now. Don't, don't delay it. Uh, I want to talk about a couple of other issues like uh, mental health in uh, IT and uh, open source. Um, there's this called Open Source Mental Illness. Uh, here's the website of, um, that deals with it. And there's actually a foundation that helps people with uh, mental illness open source. Um, there's a lot of uh, pressure on maintainers of popular projects, actually. And they, they have done enormous amount of work. But with time, they, they get only negative feedback. And they get a ton of it. Um, people come uh, to the project and um, ask for some feature, and they actually expect from the author, uh, author of the package, a library that has done uh, so much work, to actually do more and expect them to do it in time. Uh, so that actually leads to people abandoning packages, um, closing, taking down open source uh, packages, uh, going in depression. So that's actually important. Uh, that's why one of the main reasons for more people to uh, become contributors and to move from just users to uh, contributing and helping the maintainers with their workload. Also, uh, remember to, to balance and to not always take your, uh, all your free time. When you start something like a pull request, um, try to finish it and not take another 20 tasks. Um, the good thing is that you could stop taking time. Uh, you could finish something next week or next month, and that's not a problem. And also, the diversity is um, uh, quite bad at the moment in IT. Uh, there are some uh, women, uh, female profiles uh, GitHub that actually put male photo, just not uh, for the reason not being harassed. Uh, and it's important that more and more uh, people that are different from white men, because that's, that's the majority at the moment, uh, to come to open, so, uh, open source and to be accepted. Because uh, as, um, as diversity grows, actually uh, it will be easier for new people to come in. And some conclusions. Um, I gave you some pointers, and you've heard uh, yesterday from Burjdar Bujanov uh, that the government is doing open source, and from Burjdar Batsov uh, how he actually grew his uh, open source contributions. Uh, but the important thing is that uh, that won't motivate you enough. You need to find your own drive. You need to uh, find what rocks your boat and what's your motivation to contribute and to persist. Uh, sometimes uh, that's giving back. Sometimes it's because you'll actually have an impact uh, or because you'll actually see uh, that you're growing and people are taking you seriously. So find your own drive, take action, um, and be prepared to get a shovel and start digging. Uh, don't, don't stop at the hard work. And don't forget to pass it on. Uh, once you contribute enough, don't forget to be accepting of new people and urge them to contribute. Um, you could find the slides at uh, hkw.com slash talks. And I hope you have some questions because I have a lot of time to discuss some of the reasons, for example, why uh, you contribute or don't contribute to open source and basically the, the whole community. Thank you. All right, so we have plenty of time now for questions. So raise your hand or just go back uh, behind the uh, mics. It's up to you, so any questions? If you don't have questions, I have. Sure. Uh, which is the best project for, uh, to start from contributing? The best project is the one that you're familiar with. So, um, for example, if you're using uh, uh, some gem from Rails, start with that. Explore the project, find some issues, uh, report some feedback. And most of the time, you've actually um, used some uh, projects and you have modified them in your code base. Try to contribute back 
discuss uh, with the maintainers if that could be accepted. That's the, that's the best project to start. Okay, uh, if I'm completely new by, then there is obviously no project I'm familiar with. In that case, could you recommend uh, one or two or three projects that uh, could be a good start for a complete new buy? Well, it's depending, uh, if you're completely uh, new to programming, it uh, depends on uh, programming language that you're learning, for example. Uh, I could start with uh, some of the popular frameworks there uh, because they have good documentation. Um, and you could read the documentation and see how what's working how and try to improve it. For example, uh, in PHP, uh, Symfony community uh, is great. In Rails, uh, in the Ruby community, the, uh, the Rails project is James. Uh, in JavaScript, uh, there are a lot of popular uh, NPM packages that could contribute to. And you could even start with simple HTML websites. Uh, there are a lot of sites uh, with open data that are GitHub. You could start there. Um, there are a lot of uh, Chrome extensions that you could easily um, pick and start actually modifying some website and see results immediately. OK, thanks. Any other questions? I see there in the back. Um, coming at this from uh, a slightly different angle, um, I run a small educational institute, and I'd like to encourage people who use our content right now. Uh, generally, it's consultants who take it, and they tend not to credit back. And I'm interested in creating a culture that's more like open source projects, where people will credit back um, and share and contribute back what they learn when they're teaching, you basically using our slide decks, for example. Um, I was wondering if you had any, any advice on how to create that kind of environment and those kind of incentives where we're, uh, instead of people sort of taking something that they go, that's great, I can teach that to my client and pretend it's my content, to say, I've learned something and, and give it back to the greater whole. Um, yeah. So one solution that some big co companies do uh, is to lock in when something like that happens and try to create uh, DRMs and software that will actually uh, make it possible just for uh, just to, to use that content from that source. Um, but I, I prefer to go to the other end to actually make it completely open and try to get contributors on board to your own project and source and, uh, and to make it more popular, to make it better because of uh, wider usage. And then you'll actually become uh, bigger and more powerful than users who are just like using the content. Um, also, uh, try to, to use platforms uh, where uh, like some like, where well, credit is uh, um, credit more equally, uh, like more easily, and for example, um, for example, instead of sharing PDFs, try to share um, presentations in HTML or something like that on GitHub. Um, but it depends on your case. Basically, um, probably could give you more details about about. What's your case? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if, if I answer, answer that. Uh, okay. All right. Any other questions? Hi. So, could you elaborate a little on the link between open source and voluntary contributions and depression and mental health? That seems kind of out. And at the same time, not quite old. Uh, sure. Um, basically, um, if you have a package and then it starts growing and um, becomes more popular, then uh, comments come in, but the first comments are always negative. Uh, like, that doesn't work. Uh, that's, ba uh, that's worse than something else. And uh, there are a lot of requests for features, um, and people get angry. Like, literally, they, they get angry with you for not doing them. 
Um, so with time, that pressure adds up, and if you have a few projects, um, that could add a lot of, uh, lot of burden on you, uh, a lot of emotions. And if you do that just in your free time, combined your, with uh, your work, um, it, will be, it could be a lot, and it could uh, restrain you from contributing further and abandoning that project. Um, so uh, the open source uh, uh, Melting, Mental Health Institute, I think it's called, uh, deals with that. And basically, they, they fund speakers to go around conferences uh, to talk about that and try uh, people to acknowledge that problem and not just go into depression and abandoning projects. So uh, that's why I think we, we should be uh, humble, accepting, and uh, appreciating other other people' uh, work and effort and time. Thank you. All right. Uh, before we proceed with the next question, uh, just uh, to ask you, if you have Lenovo tablet, please approach my colleague on the other mic. This is something important, I think. And now the next question. OK, it is not a question, but to add to what he said, that uh, there is a joke like, what's the worst thing you can do to people on the internet? Well, you give them good open source software, and they get angry at you. <laughs> All right, and uh, there is another one. Just, uh, Harry, to ask you, like a personal opinion, there is an uh, initiative like Google Summer of Code, which is focused uh, on open source and contributing with new features. Do you think that such kind of event could be realized locally, like in Europe, in Bulgaria? Um, yeah, and I think it, it could be even um, uh, done on a very local and personal level. Uh, for example, go to your uh, local user group. Um, if you haven't uh, contributed to open source, power somebody local that will uh, hold your hand for the beginning. Uh, that's okay. And uh, also some hackathons um, are done specifically um, on events for, for example, for charities, for open source, for fixing bugs, for um, uh, writing tests, or etc. Uh, it, it could be done with workshops, hackathons, events, user groups. Uh, it could be done with friends, it could be done on conferences. So I think that uh, uh, that could scale quite a bit if it's done on a very small level, but quite um, a few uh, places. Thank you. All right, maybe one more question, if there is any. If not, let's thank one more time, Harry. Thank you.